Hello everyone, in the last tutorial I show you how you cre can create these two forms and now we can continue with this project. So first we need to go to this documentation site and we can start implementing our registration pr procedure. So first we need to define our cognito user pool so we can go in our project and app.js Okay, first this, and after that, we need to implement this use case one, register a user with the application. So we will copy this code in our project. So this is our register function. Uh, just a second, and okay, great. Pull data, actually pull data, we can define here on start of our application, sorry, here, and we need to specify our user pool ID and our client ID, and in the last tutorial we wrote this data here in AWS data, so we can copy this user pool ID and uh, client ID. So, great. And after that, uh, we have user pool is equal to new disk cognito user pool, and we define our cognito user pool in first line here. So, that's okay to write in this way. We need to define attribute list and of course we have data email this is email with value of uh, email this value here and we don't need this phone number so we can remove this okay we define our, our attribute email and push to our list so after that we are able to call sign up on this user pool with username oh, sorry username username password password and okay that's great if there is an error we'll be alerted with error and if not cognito user and console.log okay let's check this we can go here, we can specify some username test, some email address, for example this, and password test test. We will look at our console and click on register. Wait a little bit and username is test. If we go here, this is, this is actually this, so we can go on our email and we expect that Cognito will send us a code for a registration and here is our verification link. So next thing that we need to do is uh, to validate our email address. Uh, okay, I changed this here in message cost here, so we need to choose code verification type and actually if you follow with um, follow first tutorial you actually have this selected so we can do this again I will delete this test user delete user and uh, actually we can click on text and our new email is our verification code. Great, our verification code is this. So we need to find this use case here in documentation. So confirm a register user using a configuration code. Okay, great. So we can copy this uh, code and go to validate. So we need to validate. Uh, oh, sorry. We need to add 
character in this paste mode. So pull data we specify this in here. Pull data and okay. User data username is username. Pool is this user pool, so we can delete this again. Uh, and cognito user is equal to cognito user. But we need to write this cognito user here. So for cognito user equal Amazon cognito identity dot cognito user. Great. And okay, that's everything. What uh, confirmation code is here? Code. And again, if there is an error, we will be alerted with error. And if not, we will receive this console.log. So we can check this. So we can go to slash code, code, sorry, code registration, registration. Wait a little bit. And our username is test and our code is here in our email address, this. Click on validate. Wait a little bit. Uh, maybe we need to refresh this. Test. Validate. Wait a little bit and call success is result. Is call result is success. So we can look in our user pool. We actually have this username test and this test uh, have email verified with true. So it's great. And this is our our email. Great. After that, we are actually able to sign in. So we can go back here in index and start implementing our sign in procedure. So go again to documentation. And this is our user use case four. So again, we can copy this code, go to sign in function, again, pay and okay. Oops, sorry. So again, uh, here we specify our authentication data with username username and with password password oops with small p okay authentication details is new authentication details and then again we need to write this here is um, dot authentication details and pull data we again have specified here, oops, sorry, here. This is our pool data. And user data is username with our uh, username. And pool is user pool. Cognito user again is new Cognito user. And on this Cognito user, we are able to call this function authenticate user. On success, we will do only console.log and now we don't need anything about this. So we can delete this and on failure we will alert alerted bit with error. Okay, great. So now we actually can try and do sign in. Okay, let's check this. Refresh now username is test and password is test test when we click on sign in We received this access token in our Console in the next tutorial. I will explain a little bit more about tokens But if we try to write some other password some wrong password and to click on sign in and this is incorrect username or password. So great that that work. So if user 
successfully log in, we can redirect this user to window.location.infref equal to welcome. So we can do this and let's check this again. Test, test and test, sign in and yes, we are here in our slash welcome route. Okay, we will fix this. This is from our welcome fun uh, welcome dot html and on load we call set welcome function so we can define this function here with nothing and okay there is no error great so okay now we can implement our welcome function and here we need to find our username and how we can do this we can go again in our documentation go to use case 16 i believe yes and again we don't need this so i will copy this and copy this but i will again uh, remove a lot of code from here okay so let's go again in our set welcome function oops sorry and let's go again pull data we don't need this user pool is again our new cognito user pool cognito user is user pool dot get current user and if that user is not null we need to call this get session method and check session validity so is everything okay we can check here again refresh and okay great so now we can do console.log of, of this cognito user cognito user dot username I check this test so we are able to do something like this to write this username here in our span I, with id username so we can find this username id dot value cognito oops sorry cognito user dot username and check this no and jquery value uh, I believe this is dot html and okay let's check this yeah great so hello test and this test is our our test that is signing in our application so after that we need to implement our sign out function now if we click it needs only console.log sign out so we can go again in our documentation go to sign out sign out so we only need to call this sign out on our cognito user so here we can find the sign out function call this sign out on cognito user but before this of course we need to find our cognito user and this is Oops, that code we need to user dot sign out great and if everything is okay we need to uh, redirect our user to our main page so on slash great let's check this sign out great now if we go on welcome 
again. Everything is okay, but here is we don't have any user because there is no any user. So sign out. Uh, cognito user is null. Why? Because there is no user. So we can do uh, if cognito user is not null, then this. Okay, great. Let's check this again. Great. Everything, everything is okay. The very last thing that we can do is to go here to our welcome.html and to fill this uh, data from protected API div. So how we can do this? We can go to app.js file and here we can call with Ajax, uh, actually with post request, so we can call this dollar sign jQuery.post on some URL with some data, we will fill this later. And if everything is okay, we can have this uh, callback function with function with data. And we can find this, oops, we can find this ID, uh, ID here, dot HTML data. Okay, so our URL can be some API slash protected API and mm, nothing here. Okay, great. So we need to go to our app.py file, add this route slash API slash uh, protected API with methods equal to post because we will need post request and with function protected API and that function for now will return only some protected data from API. So we can check this and go here and start. Okay, great. So we need to go to slash welcome and to refresh this. And yes, here we have some protected data from API. So in the next tutorial, we need to really protect this data. And how we will do this? We will pass something here to this function with this data here, some token equal to token and and we will extract this token here and we will validate this token if this token will, will valid is valid we can return data and if not we actually not return this data but more about this in the next tutorial of this series goodbye